Dubai and Abu Dhabi with only 15,000 pesos. Let's go. Hi guys, my name is Angelica Wanders. And I'm Eileen Wanders. And welcome to another episode of Where Can You Travel on a Budget. What if I were to tell you that you can experience two of the most expensive cities in the UAE with very little money? Well, challenge accepted. Today we're taking on the challenge of visiting Dubai and Abu Dhabi with a max budget of 15,000 pesos. And that's inclusive of transpo, hotels, tours, food, and activities. And I know it sounds hard to believe, but stick until the end of this video because we're going to show you every single cent that we spent one by one. We're currently on a journey to visiting 100 countries around the world. And on this channel, we're going to show you our itineraries, our cost breakdowns, and a whole ton of money-saving hacks. So if you want to travel around the world in the easiest and most affordable way possible, then this channel is perfect for you. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you'll be updated on our next budget travel guide. But for now, let's explore Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Okay, so first order of business, we took a flight from Manila to Dubai with Cebu Pacific. And the moment we arrived in Dubai, we picked up three things at the airport. Number one, a local SIM. Before your trip to Dubai, I would highly suggest pre-booking a SIM card so you have internet to navigate your way around Dubai. Our SIM card only costed us 1,080 pesos, good for four days, and it includes four gigabytes worth of data. We'll leave a link down below for one of the cheapest and most reliable local SIMs in the city. Number two, we picked up a silver Knoll card. This is a reloadable transit card which can be used for buses, trains, ferries, taxis, and other modes of transport around Dubai. It costs 25 dirhams and it already includes 19 dirhams consumable credits which you can use throughout your entire journey. And number three, of course, you need some cash. From our own experience, we found that withdrawing money from an ATM abroad usually offers better exchange rates as compared to money changers. But don't worry about withdrawing too much because throughout Dubai, you can use your credit card for most transactions. Now, after we got everything we need, it's time for us to get to our hotel. Where to stay in Dubai Many budget tourists choose to stay in the Deira district of Dubai because it's more affordable than staying downtown and it's only a train ride away from major tourist spots. We booked at the Grand Square Hotel and decided to stay there for three nights which costed a total of 9,448 pesos good for two packs. That was a long and tiring travel day but it's all going to be worth it because tomorrow we're gonna do some of the coolest things we've ever done in our lives. Today is the day we witnessed the most popular attraction in all of Dubai. So let's head downtown. So we took a few trains to make it to the Dubai Mall station. And once we got there, we started our walk to the palace downtown. It was quite a long walk, maybe around 20 minutes, but that wasn't a bother because on the way, we witnessed the tallest building in the world. Wow. Oh my God, it's so cool. <laughs> I really gotta tilt my head up just to see the top. <laughs> and after walking through the Dubai Mall, we finally made it to the palace downtown. My turn, Naman. <laughs> We've been here for a good maybe 20 minutes running around. Pagod na? After that fun little photo shoot, we walked back to the Dubai Mall to eat some brunch. And what better brunch is there to eat aside from burgers, fries, and a milkshake? Eileen's gonna try Five Guys for the very first time. Look at that. Rate this out of 10. A 9.8. 
Well, what, where's the point two? Ooh, that. That's it. My turn, Aman. Oh, wow. So I just found out that the Dubai Mall is actually the largest mall in the world. It even has its own aquarium inside. So after exploring the Dubai Mall a little bit longer, we decided it was time to head on to our next activity, the Desert Safari Adventure. We actually booked the tour because it's easier, convenient, and in my opinion, it's even cheaper. Our meetup point was back in Deira, so we headed back to our hometown and waited patiently until the tour van picked us up. Once the tour operators finally arrive, we hopped onto the van with the other participants and off we go to the desert. After a few souvenir stopovers, of course. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and when we got to the desert, we transferred to the infamous 4x4 Land Cruiser, which is the vehicle that will take us dune bashing through the desert. And guys, little did we know this would be one of the coolest experiences we've ever had. suddenly stopped in the middle of the desert and were given five minutes to take pictures. Yes, only five minutes. We were worried that this wasn't enough time, but we did our best and here's what we got. back in the car and it was time to head to the safari camps. Did you guys know that this is how you ride a camel? We did not expect that camel ride. <laughs> Look at our camel photo, that's the cutest thing. The desert safari camp was really cool and with lots of freebies. You can try shisha for free, there's free coffee and tea, free camel riding, and free henna painting. Not only that, but there were live performances in the middle of the desert. Belly dancing, a fire show, and a tonor... Tonora? Okay, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's this dance. But the best part of our desert safari experience was definitely the free buffet dinner. The tour includes pick up and drop off from the city, the 4x4 sand dune ride, all of the desert safari activities, and don't forget the buffet dinner. All of this for only 1,229 pesos. We'll leave a link in the description below so you can get a discount on your tour. But what made the night even better was the people we met along the way. Well, these are our new friends Hi. from Hi. Korea Hi. and from Mauritius Hi. and from the Philippines. <laughs> I just love making new friends on our trips because it makes the trip even more meaningful. So I'm gonna see you in Korea. Of course, contact me when you visit Korea. Uh, and funny enough, I did meet up with them in Korea. And it's so cool how our friendship started here in Dubai, specifically in this car. Going back home. Today was a fun day, and even though this is a budget travel guide, tomorrow we get a taste of something a little expensive, literally speaking. <gasps> Does it fit within our budget? Just keep watching to find out. It tastes like my necklace. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to take a day trip to the largest city in the UAE, Abu Dhabi. And here's how to get there in 20 seconds. Just take the train to the Al Gubeba metro station, walk to the nearby Al Gubeba bus station, reload your NOL card because the bus to Abu Dhabi is 25 dirhams one way and 25 dirhams coming back. Buy a quick on-the-go brunch at the bus station convenience store, and then take the E100 bus to Abu Dhabi which takes about a 1-2 to two hour ride. Before you know it, you'll make it to the Abu Dhabi central bus station. 
The moment you arrive, you need to buy their transit card called the Hafilat Smart Card. This is the equivalent of the Null Card of Dubai. It's how you can get around Abu Dhabi via public transportation. But to save time and energy, we just decided to book an Uber to our destination for today. And guys, this place is so beautiful. Welcome to the Emirates Palace. Emirates Palace is a five-star hotel in Abu Dhabi. Luxury interior, fancy chandeliers, and majority of its suites are furnished in marble and gold. Speaking of gold, you can actually taste gold in their hotel cafe. And that's exactly what we did. This was our very first time to ever try out a gold cappuccino. <laughs> you have gold on your lips. Wow. Guys, accidentally spat the gold. Don't you just want to make a necklace out of it? Go. Tastes like metal. <laughs> To be honest, we're not really coffee drinkers, and when we do drink coffee, it's usually three-in-one sachets worth 10 pesos. But now we found ourselves sitting at a palace drinking a coffee worth more than 120 times the price. And although it was a bit pricey, we have no regrets. We're always down for an awesome experience. You're treating, right? Okay, no problem. Thank you for the treat. <laughs> now it was time to move on to our next destination, the largest mosque in the country. We booked another Uber to go back to the Abu Dhabi Central Bus Station. And when we got there, we hopped onto Bus 94 and this took us to the Grand Mosque. We read online that there are abaya robes for rent at the mosque entrance. And since the mosque is very sacred, women have to wrap themselves up from head to toe. Unfortunately, when we got there, we were shocked to find out that they discontinued their abaya oh. robe rental since pandemic. So yeah. before, you're allowed to borrow abaya, but now they don't do it anymore. Even though I'm wearing long, still not allowed. I have this, still not allowed. So sadly, we had no choice but to skip the mosque altogether. Make sure you wear the appropriate attire or buy an abaya robe in advance so you can experience this legendary mosque. Instead, we decided to visit the nearby mall and grab a bite to eat. Although we weren't able to get the whole Grand Mosque experience, we were just happy to see it in person, even just from the outside. So after a bit of footage, we hopped back onto Bus 94 to take us back to the Abu Dhabi bus station. But getting home was tricky. Well, it was supposed to be simple, but we ended up sleeping on the bus and surpassing our bus stop. We passed it. <laughs> we missed our bus stop. We're going to take another bus to go back to the bus station. Then once we finally made it to the bus station and boarded the bus, of course, we took the wrong bus going back to Dubai. I have no idea what was with us that day, but I'm gonna blame the coffee. It tastes like metal. <laughs> it's a good thing we did end up in Dubai, but they dropped us off at a different bus station. It was a bad mistake and about 20 metro stations away from where we were supposed to go. Never let us lead the way. But miraculously, after an extra hour of commuting, we were able to get back to our hotel. Our Abu Dhabi trip wasn't perfect. We wore the wrong attire to the mosque and we took a lot of wrong turns. But at the end of the day, we had fun exploring the unknown. I think this little day trip turned out to be a lot more memorable than we expected. Today is our last day in the UAE, and since we'll be out all day, we decided to check out early and leave our bags in the lobby to pick up for our flight later. Now, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and visit the historical village of Old Dubai. Oh, and I didn't mention yet, but it's actually my birthday today, so today is going to be really special with a little bit of bikinis and cake later. So let's go! From our hotel, we walked about 15 minutes to the Abra station. What's an Abra, you ask? Well, an Abra is a small traditional ferry used to bring people across the Dubai Creek. And our destination for today is actually on the other side. You can buy a ticket on the spot because Abras depart every few minutes. But before we move on to our first destination, let's find a quick breakfast first. <laughs> So 
we headed back to the Abra station, hopped onto the Abra, and off we go to Al Sif. The boat ride took only 5 minutes, and the moment we got there, we were in awe with the beautiful architecture of old Dubai. features historical looking architecture that recreates the city's past so visitors feel like they've stepped back in time. It's free to stroll through their alleys but you can also thrift some vintage goodies, buy traditional carpets, and even order a drink at their old school Starbucks. There are lots of restaurants and stores in the area so Al Sif is definitely a good blend between the old and the new. And after a little bit of exploring, we decided to go to Jumeirah Beach so we could witness the iconic Burj Al Arab. I'm sure you've all seen this photo before. Yeah, it doesn't look like that anymore. It looks like this. There's a new building structure covering the iconic view of the Burj Al Arab. However, if we go to the other side of the building, we might be able to get a good view. So we booked a taxi from Al Sif to the Madinat Jumeirah, which is a beachfront resort with an unobstructed view of the Burj Al Arab. And finally, we were able to get that famous shot. Please be informed that all guests who want to come to this beach are now required to book a day tour at the Madinat Jumeirah. But thanks to the resort, we were given quick access to take a little bit of footage for our vlog. And it's funny, because just outside, we found our cars in the parking lot. So which one do you want to take today? I was thinking of the Defender. The Defender? Oh, but I didn't gas it up yet, so we'll probably take this one. Let me just go get the car key. I'll take you there. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just do? Just a few steps away from the resort is a mall complex called the Souk Madinat Jumeirah. So we explored the mall for a few hours and also decided to grab a quick meal at the noodle house. This is our 270 peso water. Cheers the water. Best drink of the trip. <laughs> Two pieces of chicken, five pieces of lumpia, <laughs> and two rice. And I think that's a little bit of food for most people, but we made Bawi with a lot of it in water. <laughs> Just to let you guys know that this is one of the cheapest restaurants in this mall. Just be prepared when you dine around Jumeirah because the restaurants in the area are quite pricey. And now it was time to go to our last destination of the trip. No trip to Dubai is complete without visiting the famous Dubai Palm. We arrived at the Five Palm Jumeirah Hotel, where lies the number one rooftop bar in Dubai. And guys, just look at this view. And since it was my birthday today, the penthouse was kind enough to even <laughs> surprise me with a birthday cake. Wow. The reason why we chose this place is because they serve Michelin star desserts and we wanted to try their famous cheesecake. Uh, happy birthday! Wait, hold up. I smell this and it smells really good. Tell us, what is this? This is a Michelin star cheesecake. You're a Michelin star. Ooh, so sad. Oh my god. Wow. It's hitting you, right? It touches your heart. So Angelica is about to try the cake that they gave. This is my time. I'm gonna finish this right now. Okay, na karami ka na. My turn. Approve. <gasps> There's the wow. This was the perfect way to end our Dubai trip and the best way to celebrate my birthday. Yummy dessert, a sunset view, and I experienced this all with my one and only partner. Thank you, bye-bye. Oh, thank you so much. The day went so well that I wouldn't have it any other way. Until this happened. 
So we've literally been waiting for maybe an hour trying to book a taxi, trying to book an Uber. And there's so many people trying to book here and we're all competing just to get a taxi. So when a taxi comes up, everyone runs to it. Our flight is at 11. We're supposed to be at the airport by 8 and it's already 7. Is it 7? Get out of here. Yes. Oh my God. We need an Ancas, come on! At this point, we're trying to book an Uber on the other side of the street for lesser competition. Are we gonna miss our flight? And miraculously, we were able to book an Uber. So our driver first dropped by our hotel so we could pick up our bags. We'll just pick up our luggage. Thank you. Our taxi is waiting outside. Thank you, thank you. And now, off we go to the airport. I really hope we don't miss our flight. Okay, thank you so much. Are you okay? Yes, we're okay, thank you. <laughs> we can breathe now. <laughs> Let's go. Run. Oh my gosh. Thank you to our we Uber driver. Angelica almost cried. <laughs> I'm so happy we made it just in time. So we checked in, we boarded the flight, and the rest is history. <laughs> that was our four days and three nights Dubai and Abu Dhabi adventure. Now for our cost breakdown. Please note that the prices are subject to change over time. I'm just sharing the exact prices we've paid on our trip last November 2022. This list consists of hotels, transport, tours, food, and activities. So let's begin. First things first, our pre-expenses amounted to 5,665 pesos per head. On day 1, we spent a total of 155 pesos per head. On day 2, we spent a total of 1,671 pesos per head. On day 3, we spent a total of 3,359 pesos per head. And on day 4, we spent a total of 4,097 pesos per head. So add all this together, our total cost was 14,947 pesos per head. I hope you guys enjoy this budget travel guide and if this video helped you in any way, please hit that like button and comment down below if you're going to Dubai or Abu Dhabi anytime soon. Always remember guys, travel does not have to be expensive. And that's what we want to preach on this channel. We want to teach you guys how to save money when traveling, how to make money when traveling, how to book cheap flights, cheap hotels, and just a whole lot of travel hacks. So if you like that kind of content, hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell below. Lastly, please share this video with your travel buddies because nothing is better than sharing the experience with someone else. I hope you guys enjoyed this travel guide. This is Angelica Wanders. This is Eileen Wanders. Never stop wandering.